Babylon. Randy Yarbrough here with you this Thursday, June the 11th, the year 2015 of my Lord and Savior, the Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, there is no King but King Jesus. The thing that hath been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no New thing under the sun. All been done before. We just change the actors on the stage. They just get more corrupt. <laughs> but, you know, things remain the same. Uh, people just sit back and do nothing. And, and well, oh, well, oh, well. So, since there's nothing really new going on, few hu- few housekeeping notes. National conference call for the Farmers Norm, National Organization for Raw Materials, Anyone else out there that wants an honest money system, we have a plan. It has worked very well in the past. The only problem was it didn't enrich the bankers. You need to find out more about this. Join us every Saturday, Tuesday, 5 p.m. Mountain, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, and 4 Pacific. The number to call is 712-432-0926-712. 432-0926, conference number 123462, 123462. Also want to thank First Amendment Radio at firstamendmentradio.com for rebroadcasting us up over their satellite and internet network. We thank all those listeners out there at firstamendmentradio.com. Also want to thank geomedianetwork.com, rebroadcasting us every weeknight. 8 p.m. Mountain Time, and other times also, so check the schedule at geomedianetwork.com. You can also find me at uh, mediabroadcastingcenter.com on Sunday night, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, and thanks to Kevin for that. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with my guest, Larry Taylor, here on the American Freedom Network. And we're... So listen up. Listen up. John Moore is going to be there at the... Uh, uh, right across the street from the station at the community center at 7 o'clock tonight. Hopefully we'll get John on the radio here for a few minutes uh, at the bottom of the hour. But uh, they need some help uh, setting up the, the place, setting up the chairs and stuff uh, at 6 o'clock. And we need your help here at the station because you wouldn't know about John being there uh, this evening uh, to present some new information he's uh, come across and uh, what he's seen traveling across the country we need your help simple as that keep this station up and running and going we need your help I want somebody to out there at the meeting tonight to pass the hat for the station but call Michael 800 205-6245, 800-205-6245, 205-6245, 800-205-6245. You can make a pledge on your plastic. You can order a copy of today's show or past shows we've done, other shows here on the network. That helps us out. You can pick up that envelope and address it to KHNC, P.O. Box 1750, P.O. Box 1750, Johnstown, Colorado. Federal Occupation Zone, 80534. Your check, your money order, much appreciated. We'll even still take the fraudulent reserve notes. Other currencies, sure. Throw them in if you got them. Chinese yuan, that'd be good. That's that's the next uh, world reserve currency. (laughs) Better learn Chinese, folks. Better learn it quick. (laughs) They're coming to collect. You could throw in some just weights and measures, the Lord's money. At the very least, tell your friends and family, tune in 1360 AM on the Internet at America News Net, America News Net dot com and call the advertisers, folks. Let them know you're out there, you're listening. You appreciate their support of American Freedom Network. Great Plains Solar, Pat Osborne out there. He's got uh, a service. Uh, that you need. He's got the equipment you need for a backup power supply to a whole house system. 
It'd be kind of nice to have lights when the, well, <laughs> when the power goes off. Yeah. Call him. 303-239-9963. 303-239-9963. Great Plains Solar. Dot com is the website. My guest today, uh, it's been too long since he's been on, a watchman on the wall out there, trying to awaken the slumbering masses as they sit in their lounge chairs next to the river denial, watching Dancing with the Stars. Yes. Larry Taylor, welcome. Thank you, Randy. You sounded in rare form when you were greeting Babylon at the beginning of the show. I, yeah. That, that, that charged me up. <laughs> that charged you up, huh? Babylon, yes. Oh, we live. I, you know, you know, the interesting thing is, uh, Randy, you don't hear many of those Babylon deniers anymore. I, I think some of the uh, denials used is worn off or something. Maybe they sobered up just a little bit. Uh, they're not as outspoken as they used to be, uh you know, Babylon means confusion, and hey, look at America. Man, look at Washington. Well, what else do I even need to say anymore? Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, well, and, and the, quote, uh, prophecy gurus out there, you know, oh, Mer- the, the, America's not mentioned in the Bible at all. You know, nothing's mentioned about America. We're not in the Bible. Uh, oh, really? Well, maybe the Lord just didn't call us America. He called us by what we really are is Babylon. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, it's, uh, uh, that's a pretty good stroke of the pen you just gave. I mean, that, 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 that's a good point. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I, I can't imagine John Moore in Colorado, but boy, that, uh, he's got some good stuff if he's going to, if he's going to go all the way to Colorado, um, interesting. I like hearing him whenever he does give a presentation or a talk. He's uh, he's uh, 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 motoring down the highway as we speak, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to have a good cell signal here at the bottom of the hour, catch him uh, and let the people know. And he'll be there tonight, folks, at, at the Johnstown Community Center right across from the station at 7 to 9. Uh, they could use a few extra hands setting up chairs at 6 o'clock, uh, right at the end of this show. And I would, I would, I would pray, pray, folks, someone out there would take it upon themselves to pass the hat to help us out here at the station. Because you wouldn't know about John being there tonight, except it was for this station. We need your help. Keep this light shining that, you know, pay the phone bill, feed the squirrel, all those things we have to do to keep this radio station running. We need your help. I noticed uh, uh, on your update, uh, Larry, uh, Ann Coulter uh, uh, had an article on there about uh, immigration, <laughs> how, we, how we, won't, we won't hear the mainstream media talk about immigration unless it's, well, you know... Um, this uh, Indian kid from India immigrated here. <laughs> They're so smart. They won the national spelling bee. Yes, split the prize between them. Yes. Oh my God. Oh my God. I tell you what. Uh, I don't know if you know him or know of him even, but uh, recently I've, I've come into contact with a, a guy named uh, Dan Gordon. I don't know if you've heard of him or not. But no. if you've seen some of my postings, you know, Dan Gordon, uh, he's been, well, he's got a lot of strikes against him because, number one, uh, he's got a new book just came out called Day of the Dead. You could almost write that about America, actually. But yes. uh, mostly, as a matter of fact, you could almost write a novel and say every, most Americans died on their couch. They never got back up, you know. <laughs> but uh, he's got a picture of himself holding a machine gun, and he's wearing an IDF uniform standing in Israel, defending Israel from enemies. And uh, so that's one strike. Uh, he loves Israel. That's another strike. He's born in, he's an Israeli-American. I guess that's another, that's three strikes. But he just got this book out. Really, really good. I'll, I'll tell you about it in a minute. Why? Yes. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break here on the American Freedom Network. 
And we're back. Randy Arbor with you, my guest, Larry Taylor. You can uh, sign up for Larry's uh, email alerts. Just go to Larry W. Taylor dot org. Larry W. Taylor dot org. You can email him from there and just, well, uh, all the new, the radios he's doing and news updates and, well, uh, how the earth is shaking. Um, earthquakes everywhere, swarms and swarms of earthquakes. So Dan Gordon in, what was that, the Day of the Dead? Yeah, it's uh, the Day of the Dead, book one, Gaza. And what he wrote is a very, as a matter of fact, he's got a U.S. Marine colonel, uh, or actually uh, not a colonel, he's General Robert Magnus uh, proclaiming the book. Um what he has done is he fought in, well, he's fought in a number of the Israeli wars, but he fought in the last Gaza war where so much rocketry was fired, you know, missiles and rockets out of Gaza into Israel, the last one they had, and, and protective edge, et cetera, et cetera. But he has wrote a book, just came out, brand new book. As a matter of fact, I got my copy by UPS today. It just arrived. And um, in this book, he you, you mentioned immigration. He literally uh, has wrote a novel about the issue between, you know, Israel and Gaza and likened it to the border of Mexico and the U.S. As a matter of fact, may I say the open border, but he also includes the, the tunnel information and a lot of uh, revelatory information on the tunnels uh, in Gaza, the Hamas tunnels, and likened them also to the very same drug smuggling tunnels and from Mexico into the U.S. that are there in every state. And uh, it, it's a real interesting read. Um, the da- matter of fact, they're going to make it into a motion picture. They actually tried to delay the book so they could get the movie filmed, but he wouldn't do it. He went ahead and put the book out, books out. But, it, it, you know, that's a good one. Here's another plus, and I don't get anything for these ads. They're not paid ads, and they're not It's just me talking. But uh, William Fortune wrote one lately that he didn't even want to write, but he said he felt like he was impressed to write it called Day of Wrath. And it is really telling. When you get through reading this, you'll let down and walk outside and stare at the mountains. Maybe you'll stare at the uh, dormant volcanoes outside your home or something. But uh, it's so telling that, you know, here we have trained all of our children uh, to actually uh, be slaughtered. I mean... Of course, this is, now I gotta say this, uh, Randy, this is totally politically incorrect. Okay? Both books, totally politically incorrect. Uh, doesn't follow the Washington line. You know, doesn't follow <laughs> the politically correct line anywhere in the world almost, but, uh, true nevertheless. We have literally trained our children to go to rooms in, now we, you gotta remember, the schools and all these other building locations are uh, no gun location. So what, if terrorists decide to come over here and do any strikes, well, the first thing, you, the easiest one to hit's a place where nobody can carry a gun. Yes. And what's easier than having all the children run to what they call a safe room that I could kick in with my foot, much less shoot the lock off the door, you know, and go in and just slaughter everybody. I mean, I, you know, I hate to say that, but I think we've trained, you know, we didn't train our children anymore to run! Have you ever heard that? You know, in the olden days, you could hear, run! Yes. Not anymore. No. Let's hide it. It's all shelter in place and whatever happens, <laughs> too bad. And it's so sad. We, we've trained everybody the wrong way and, and really, literally, uh, if you look at how Israel operates, and the Israeli people live with this every day. They live with this danger every day. Hey, they run! Not they Americans. run, or they pull out their weapon and they shoot the terrorist. They shoot the criminal. I've got photos after photos, and some of them I'll place on my politically correct, incorrect uh, uh, blog of, of Israeli shopping, you know, wearing M16s. Yes. You know, 
Well, wearing guns, you know, carrying guns, wearing guns. Of course, in America, this is so archaic and horrible, and 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 we're trying to get rid of all that stuff. But do you know the ones that's going to come to kill you? They don't think that way. Well, uh, Larry, it, they don't have school shootings in Israel, and the reason is they all the teachers are armed. <laughs> you got that right. I've seen pictures of that. I've seen the instructors out with a line of children and the instructors wearing a gun. I mean, they're carrying a gun across their shoulders. You know, you're, they're protected. But we see we don't think that way. We don't think that way at all. And and uh, everything we have the, listen, the powers that be have trained the American people to be deniers, to literally absorb so much denial juice that there's no Nile River nowhere in the Middle East anymore. It's all dried up and soaked up by the American wit. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, they're, they're loading it. In, it, they're not loading oil on those super tankers. They're loading denial juice on and bottling it, and that's what you're drinking, folks. The, the <laughs> masses out there, as they refer to you, you know, I didn't get time to read that of, uh, uh, pro, uh Lost it here. Uh, the book, Propaganda, where they talk about the masses and uh, yeah. Edward Lewis Bernays. That's you true. Know. Matter of fact, the denial of use, the, the denial is so heavy, uh, or the usage of it in, in uh, America. I really do believe that uh, denial actually over, overshadows cocaine. But, uh, you know, it reminds me of, you remember the, the old movie Dune? And the spice planet and the, that spice everybody was after. Well, they, that's the way the Americans are about the denial, uh, juice. It's, uh, man, there's a, there's a big demand for that kind of stuff. Maybe that's why the rich are getting richer. Uh, you know, the elite, uh, they're, they're involved in the trade of denial. Well, uh, they know exactly what's going on. They know exactly what's going on because they're the ones that have planned it. They're the ones that are putting this forward. They're the ones that are leading you down the, uh, well, the yellow brick road, folks. <laughs> Very true. Very true. <laughs> it's so yep. sad. But, you know, one thing I do with my blog, though, Randy, is I do try to, uh, you know, get out the word and, and literally, you know, like uh, Stuart Best and, and Augusto Perez, and I, I just name a long list of people that have, uh, for a number of years, been warning, giving warnings. Uh, warning time's over. All, all I'm doing now is people, and actually people can literally just go to my blog, LarryWTaylor.org, anytime, day or night, 24 hours they want to, and read anything new that's up, uh, any updates, uh, blog, you know, they can also, you know, scroll it and go back. I don't know how far they can go back, but they can go back a while. But I'm just chronicling the events now. Uh, you know, there's really not all that much warning anymore. We're already entered into the time of troubles and judgment, and um, and it doesn't appear that uh, America's going to turn around at all. Matter of fact, uh, you begin to wonder, uh, Babylon really fits a lot better than America does anymore. And I, that's sad to say because I was raised, you know, in, in this country. And loved it. And uh, but you know when I open the door and look outside, Randy, this doesn't look like what I was raised in. What I grew up in, this is different. Yes, it's different. We're we're you know uh, we're we we've, we've got uh, law enforcement officers now, uh, code enforcement officers now. We we've uh, the people are now the enemy of the police. And you you know this because you were uh, a policeman for thirty years. Oh yeah, and, and the interesting thing is I've seen a re something really recently odd, and that is the fact that now the powers that be that have made the police the enemy of the people, so to speak, they turned it around to where the people hate the police now, and they're using that angle. Yeah, and a matter of fact, uh, on my blog, if you read the the little, or actually the radio will flash that I put out, uh, it had a picture of uh, a, uh, you know an old movie, and at the bottom of the movie, it said on front, "Who you don't call, 
Now, of course, that came from the movie Ghostbusters, okay? Yeah. Ghostbusters! And, and it's almost, you know, we're, you know, people right now, there's such a rage against police, and, and, you know, there are some bad ones out there in different spots, but, you know, there always have been, and they got, they got weeded out, but anymore, you know, as I've shared with you, I, I watched it evolve from protect and serve to us and them. You know, I've shared that before on your show. But yeah. now I have seen the elite turning the worm around, and now the police have become the direct enemy in America. And anything they do now is wrong, all of them. Just one bad policeman, they're all bad. And get the cop. And there's there's such a brutal outrage in the nation against police right now, Randy. This is all this is all orchestrated, sure. totally orchestrated. Because when we hit a point here where the police finally say, "Well, uh, why should I bother to go try and uh, serve and protect?" You know, here's here's uh, whatever it is, fifty hundred. Uh, uh, 500 people rioting. Why should I bother to go serve and protect when, when I very well may be brought up on charges? Uh, and so, you know, the criminals, uh, the bust in paid for, uh, uh, paid protesters, yes. Uh huh. By George Soros. Why should I bother to go down there and, and even bother with this? Just, well, let them go. Been- Oh, exactly. Well, listen, Fox has been talking about that for almost a week now, and today, for the very first time, they're having people come on in the law enforcement uh, national groups and saying that a number of cops are already quitting the job. They're just leaving. And and what you you know, people don't realize how thin that little blue line is out there between them and total chaos. They have no idea. It may be just one cop. That's all between you and that enemy out there. But when the enemy comes, and that's why I wrote that and mentioned Ghostbusters, who are you going to call? Once you get rid of all these real bad cops you're calling bad, who are you going to call? The Black Panthers? You going to call Washington? You going to talk to Obama and get you a, uh, well, let's see, we've gone from Obamacare to Obama trade. We're headed for, uh, Obamagration. I mean, you know, I didn't figure it out why they, right from the beginning, we kept hearing abomination. It just fit. It's an abomination is what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and like you said, Randy, my God, they're still snoring on their couches all across the country. I mean, just snoring on, they have no idea it's all coming down around them. I mean, now, John Moore will tell you. I mean, you know, John Moore knows. You know, I can relate to him because, you know, he's a, he's, you know, prior military, uh, retired cop, did, uh, uh, private investigations. I mean, all kind of stuff. He's been involved. I was too in all of those. And uh, so I can relate to John Moore. And, you know, he has really talked on his shows and been uh, ridiculed and, 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 you know, I know how it goes. But, you know, there's, it's, it's becoming a situation of, you know, there's not many out there like John Moore anymore. There are not many out there going around and really telling any more of the truth because nobody wants to hear it anyway. No, uh, you know, don't bother me with the truth. Uh, let me, let me, let me just stay on the couch here. I, the icebox is full of denial juice and, and, you know, I can go to, I can go to church and, 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 you know, the, the pastor, his, his, here we are. Here's, here's what's going on. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. They are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his own gain from, from his quarter. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow will be as this day, and much more abundant. <laughs> yes. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. And we're back. Randy Arbor with you. i got Larry Taylor, my guest, LarryWTaylor.org, and we also have John Moore joining us. John will be... 
They're in uh, Johnstown tonight, 7 to 9 p.m. at the community center right across the street from the radio station. And I want someone to take it upon themselves to pass the hat around uh, for some donations to this station because, well, you wouldn't know that John would be there if it wasn't for this station. We need your help, folks. Simple as that. We need your help. John Moore, welcome. Thank you, Randy. Good to be with you, sir. So you're uh, you're uh, zooming down the road within the speed limit, I hope. Um, well, close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, usually, if you keep it. If you keep it within ten miles, usually usually okay as long as you're not weaving or anything. Yes. <laughs> so you'll uh, be in town there uh, seven to nine at the community center. That's right. Uh, right. On your way way back from the west coast. So give us a report what you've seen as you're traveling across this uh, land of the free. Well, it's as always. The, it's just a always a reminder of just how really, really big this country is, and beautiful, of course. Uh, you know, looking at a map is one thing, but actually driving 2,100 miles one direction is something else altogether. Big, beautiful country with uh, uh, healthy, uh, productive people everywhere you go. Um, at a high school graduation, that was my destination up there two nights ago. Um uh, of course, we have to remember it is uh, the West Coast. It is Seattle area. Uh, there was no invocation. There was no convocation. No valedictorian. No salutatorian. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, a very politically correct graduation. 517 students. Uh, now, they had some of the trappings of things that we're used to in a high school graduation. They had a two chosen... Uh, student speakers. There was no indication of how these youngsters were chosen, except except that they were chosen. Um, and I'm kind of guessing here, Randy, that if they can only have, if only one person can be a valedictorian, then there won't be a valedictorian. Um, well, that, you know, would, that would be, uh, that would be unfair. That might hurt, hurt the little Kitty's feelings out there. Right, right. Um, the sports teams on the West Coast and, and probably other parts of the country, I'm sure, uh, everybody who participates gets an award. Uh, no matter what the outcome is, everybody gets an award. Um, of course, that changes at the high school athletic level um, where, where they do properly uh, reward the winners of whatever event it may be. But it's it's the West Coast. It's a whole different culture from what I'm used to in the, in the Midwest, to say the least. Uh, tattoos everywhere. Uh, even more casual attire than I'm used to seeing in, in uh, Missouri, which is pretty casual, as most of the country has become. Uh, and uh, a lot... Just it's just a whole different culture. That's the only way I can describe it. Anyway, tonight I, I, I do hope uh, Paul Martin will appoint somebody to pass the hat at this event uh, for the radio station. I know the radio station could certainly use some, some funds, couldn't they? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, this, if we found out just the other day, we're going to have to buy new shoes for the squirrel. I mean, <laughs> and, and the bearings right. in the cage are squeaking, and so we got to get new bearings. It's just, you know. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, I've, uh, the station doesn't look like they're uh, spending uh, money uh, frivolously. It's, it's very, uh, very modest building uh, in a modest part of town. Uh, so they're obviously not frivolously spending money on a high-rent a high building in a high-rent district. Yes. You know, we just, uh, because you won't hear... You won't hear a show like this on Clear Channel. I'll tell you that, folks. Or, no, okay. no. <laughs> so, Larry, well, I, got, uh, I don't want to give away your your uh, the information that you've got uh, coming tonight, but you have some updated information about Planet X, uh, and and uh, well, tying it into another thing called Jade Helm. 
Right, and, right. And well, there, there's been reports off and on the past three or four months that there could be a connection to Planet X, most of which I disregarded because I couldn't backtrace to any sources. And then uh, I got information about three weeks ago from a private source that it was training connected to Planet X and then an independent confirmation from one of Steve Quayle's people. So I went ahead and wrote my report, which uh, you've read, and many people have read it and published at Steve Quayle's website on his alert section. Um, and um, it makes sense, uh, Randy, that uh, given a event the size of what we're looking at, uh, that the powers that be would want to have their people trained up and ready to respond in a certain manner. So... I'm not saying that the 10th plan is going to get any closer or, or get any have any worse effects than it's already having, which have already been pretty serious if you're paying attention to the weather. Uh, but I am saying it, it very well may be uh, this training, the Jade Helm 15 training, related to the 10th planet. And uh, what I'm doing, Randy, is publicly encouraging all, po all people to consider the period between now middle of June and, and the 1st of November as one continuous, one long training exercise for themselves and their families. Uh, if the government can train, why can't we train, Randy? Well, yeah, and why, 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 why is the government out there training on, uh, well, private property, private ranches, uh, that the ranchers have come forward to us and, and, and graciously their patriotic duty uh, donated their their private property for us to run around and, and play war games on. When they've got millions upon millions of acres of national forest, and BLM, and the Pentagon controls 27 million acres, you know? Right. Why? Right. Well, I can't answer that, obviously. I know when I was in Special Forces, we uh, did occasionally end up training on private property, such as uh, you, there's no way to practice blowing up a hydroelectric plant unless you happen to have access to a hydroelectric plant. Uh, and we did that, but we got permission first. And uh, I, did, I would go on a scouting expedition as a part of the intelligence assets, and, and we'd take photographs and make drawings and come back and, and uh, brief the A-team on the uh, hydroelectric plant, and then they would go out and uh, practice blowing it up with uh, make-believe uh, demolitions. Yeah. So there is there is precedent, and I'm talking 40 years ago, uh, actually more than 40 years ago, 1969. Uh, so th there's been interaction on private property for decades. There's nothing new about that. What may be new in this case might be the extent to which they're using it and gaining access to private property. That may be new, because obviously, I mean, I haven't been active duty in the Army since 1970. You going to stay with us, Sean? I'll stick in here for another 20 minutes or so, yeah. Okay. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. And we're back. Got Larry Taylor online. We got John Moore online, traveling, uh, zooming down the highway to Johnstown there. He'll be at the uh, community center right across the street from the radio station this evening, starting at 7 o'clock to 9. Give you an updated briefing of things he's seen and watched uh, going on. Uh, that, uh, well, <laughs> uh, things are getting most interesting, guys. Uh, also, yes. put this out there. Somebody take it upon yourself to pass the hat tonight for the radio station. And... Uh, uh, help us out, uh, get a little money coming in, pay the phone bill and the squirrel food bill. Larry, uh, you got a question for John. Well, I just wanted to tell John to don't worry about hanging around while I'm on the show. Uh, he can stay long as he wants to because I'm, I've followed John for some time and of course John lives up in Missouri. Talk to me, I'm in Oklahoma down in the Gateway and, uh, John has interesting information, and, uh, you know, I was going to say, I was listening to what he said about some military stuff he had done, and I was in SAC uh, in the Air Force, and, you know, we simulated uh, major airplane crashes, B-52, stuff like that, going to the scenes, and, you know, we simulated a lot of stuff. Of course, it was simulation, 
and we trained. And uh, this uh, Jade Helm appears to be a little bit more than training. This is more preparation than I've ever seen in this country. Uh, what do you think, John? Well, typically, Larry, uh, this kind of training is not made public. Um, when I was with Special Forces, we we didn't tell. There was no press releases uh, nationally. Sometimes a local newspaper, and we were in the one one operation in particular, not a Hala National Forest. The local newspaper uh, had a, a story uh, or two about us. We were there a full month, and interacting with the locals and going shopping and picking up supplies and so forth. But that was the extent of it, was just the local newspaper, not even local TV, not even local radio. Uh, so this kind of national coverage for our military exercises is uh, pretty unprecedented. And uh, I agree with you, Larry. I've never seen a military exercise cover this many states with this many people. It's it's beyond any precedence that I'm aware of. Well, that's exactly right. And, and you know, one of the interesting things, when we would have convoys, and, you know, like you said, uh, there was no notice uh, given. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, none of our convoys were received any escorts of any kind other than maybe MPs. And, uh, you know, if, if, if people saw a convoy on an interstate, they had no idea who it was, even where it was going. They didn't have a clue. And, and what you're saying, uh, this one is, it appears to be multiple states. And, and I noted, too, a lot of the states are literal uh, by the water states. In other words, you know, like Texas and, and Florida and, you know, some of the, the states that are bordered by water. And so right. this is really, a, it's strange. This is really strange. It is, and hopefully it will only be a training exercise, uh, but that remains to be seen. Uh, I believe it begins, uh, they start early. Don't they start this month now in June? Uh, supposedly that was the rumor that they were starting uh, June 15th, which right. is right. well. Originally away. July 15th, but now it's June 15th. Right. So uh, we're going to run we're going to run a three month operation. Okay. Uh, so uh, you know there's there's so much rumor and stuff uh, out there. You kind of have to pick and choose of and have discernment. Lord, give me discernment of all this. Uh, General uh, retired General uh, Bert uh, Stubblebine. Right. Uh, he's he's saying and looking at this is that. Uh, uh, this Jade Helm practice is a practice for the uh, implementation of Agenda 21 and the, and the environmental uh, nightmare they're getting ready to put us through, move all the people off the land. Well, here's something you, might, you, you gentlemen may find interesting. All, all flag rank officers, once they go on inactive status, they have an invitation to attend a a classified briefing once a month at the Pentagon, all all transportation and uh, expenses taken care of if they choose to. They don't have to, but it's an option that any of them can exercise uh, any given month for any flag rank officer. So Stubblebine still has that option if he wants to exercise it to go to the Pentagon once a month for a classified briefing. Okay. And... Um, High-ranking NCOs also have access to briefings. Slightly different, but uh, I, I do know firsthand from uh, interviewing uh, high-ranking retired NCOs that they have similar access. It's it's different, but similar. Well, but uh, but the the key word there is oh classified. Uh, we will uh, we will disinvite you or shoot you if you talk about this, right? Well. <laughs> I don't. I don't believe they make threats like that overtly to their own people. Uh, that would be highly unusual. You know, these guys all—they all work together. They went to school together. They they visit. You know, they have barbecues at each other's families' homes. Uh, they're basically friends. Uh, these flag rank officers. Uh, so they they don't necessarily make threats to them. Well, I that wonder if all the, the two hundred plus uh, uh, officers, uh, not all of them flag rank, but uh, 200 plus officers that have been uh, 
cashiered out of the military by the abomination, uh, I wonder if their invitation is open. Uh, um, well, there's been the two problem areas for Hussein Obama have been the uh, Air Force officers in charge of the nukes and the, the entire submarine corps, um, both of which are are highly insular. The uh, submarine corps is, all, is pretty much a service unto itself. They have their own uniforms, and they don't associate with the rest of the Navy. Stay tuned. We'll be right back for this next short break with John Moore, and then we'll continue on with Larry Taylor. Stay tuned. We're back. My guest, uh, Larry Taylor, and we've got John Moore with us for the next few minutes here. John will be at the community center there in Johnstown, right across the street from the radio station at 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, they could use a little help uh, setting things up. Uh, Diane will be there with the key at uh, 6 o'clock, so if anybody can come help set up chairs and get things ready. But John will be there at 7 o'clock. He's motoring down the highway as we speak. And, uh, well, uh, just be there. Be there. And I uh, really hope somebody will pass the hat here for the station. Uh, John, the other one uh, on this Jade Helm situation was that uh, uh, the southern border is wide open, and they're letting through the gangs. Uh, they're letting through... Um, <laughs> ISIS uh, and everything right. else is is this uh, a training to go after these guys, or is it training to uh, protect them? Well, I don't know that uh, for a fact which way it is. On one hand, on the other, I do hope that within the military they're making plans to take down these guys. Uh, one of, one of the maddening, and we got limited time here, Randy, but uh, one of the maddening things for Hussein Obama is that within the submarine corps, which they have their own independent nukes, and the Air Force uh, nuclear uh, officers in charge of nuclear weapons, every time they, they transfer one of these officers out, they get replaced by somebody just like the guy they transferred out, uh, a patriotic officer who will do the right thing for the right reasons. And the Obama administration just finds that maddening. Uh, these protocols were put in place uh, under Dwight Eisenhower to, by the Air Force and by the, the, the Navy to make sure that they always had the right people in the right place for the right reasons. And it's just been maddening that Obama can't get control of these two parts of the military like he wants to. They keep firing them, and they keep getting replaced by the same patriotic officers. So um, it's maddening for them, and I'm glad of it. Well, it's we have very to... interesting. I've, I've been watching this some, Randy, too, and John, uh, for, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, actually a number of years now. The last few years we've been watching the uh, the Obama administration and the, uh, the Navy uh, and the Air Force and been having problems with not only uh, a loose nuke here and there or one being moved here and there for various unknown reasons, but the fact is, uh, there's been a big struggle and an attempt of purge of the officers, if you said. But uh, that's the problem: is, is uh, military seems to have within itself uh, set up a, a, a function that continues to put law people in those positions. Right, right. And uh, that's a good thing. Uh, Obama, you know, at some point they may reach their goal of. Of putting men who are women in these in these positions that will act against American interests uh, it hasn't happened yet, but uh, I have to concede it could happen in the future. Well, uh, things are uh, things are heating up. That's all I know. Uh, the uh, I mean, they're they're trying to perpetrate a wage war. They're trying to perpetrate a war uh, between the people and the police uh, and we'll just see where this the Lord knows John drive careful you'll be you, at Randy. the community center uh, 7 o'clock tonight I will thank be you Randy there, Very good to talk to you. Thanks. thanks John 
We'll be right back after the news, folks. Question, comment for my guest, Larry Taylor, 877-254-7524. Phone lines are open. And my guest today, Larry Taylor, watchman on the wall out there. You can sign up for his email alerts. Just go to his blog, Larry W. Taylor dot org. Larry W. Taylor dot org. Drop him an email from there and say, hey, put me on the list. And uh, he doesn't go overboard on you. Uh, and it's uh, news you need to know. Uh, keeping up on the earth changes and the earthquakes, and it just seems like um, <clears throat> the uh, southern Pacific down through there, Solomon Islands, New Guinea, all that that area, they keep having all of these six and seven earthquakes, Larry. Oh, and, uh, you know, the interesting thing is a lot of the earthquakes are not being posted right now, too. Uh, I really have to dig to find some of this stuff, and even... Uh, you know, the media now has begun to really uh, play them down and hardly ever put them on. Uh, even that scroll across the screen barely carries an earthquake anymore. That's a, <laughs> maybe a, almost an eight. But uh, they, that's true. Uh, earthquakes are, in, in, you know, really there's a lot of activity. Uh, I know a lot, there's a lot of concern right now with New Madrid, you know, watching it closely. The West Coast, oh, my. And, and also uh, a lot of uh, dormant or so-called dormant, uh, volcano uh, seismic activity on the west coast. I, I don't know if people followed that, but that's going on. And, uh, you know, everybody, of course, watching the Ring of Fire, you know, South America, Antarctica, uh, we're having more now uh, seismic in the uh, Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico region. Uh, this is This is unprecedented. I don't ever remember so many quakes. I don't ever, ever remember so many volcanoes going at the same time and they're being added like one every few days or, or you know there's another one and and it's like they really don't even stop anymore it's just an ongoing procession of volcanic activity all over the planet matter of fact randy uh there are places that have never seen volcanic sunsets that are now seeing them around the planet in certain certain countries are beginning to see the uh volcanic ash sunsets they're really pretty but they're not good to breathe, I'm sure. Well, and what is it doing to their supposed uh, global warming? Well, uh, well, that's a, <laughs> well, Randy, that's a joke anyway. I mean, you know, when they, they're trying to penalize America and shut down our coal industry, and you've got all these volcanoes going off, give me a break. I mean, it don't even take a real, well, you don't even have to be nowhere near a scientist to figure that one out, no. you know. Oh, my well, God. I mean. And, 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 well, just right down in, in your part of the country down there, they've shut down a whole industry of lead mining. Yeah. And smelter. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, it's, it's almost like, well, really, uh, you know, we've seen the dismantling and the shutdown of America that's been going on for a number of years. You know, this is a, this is a, uh, orchestrated plan that's really been operating for many, many years, actually. And a lot of presidents just turn their head or go on by or help with it. And, and, you know, that's like I told somebody the other day, um, I think it's Augusto's radio show. I told people that think, if you think the Republicans are going to pull a, a rabbit out of the hat and be different than the Democrats, what is wrong with you? They're complicit. Democrats, Republicans, they're all wearing the same color suit. The same color hat, they look and talk just alike, they act just alike, even their gestures are the same, and people think they're different. Oh, yeah, we're going to do that. We've only been doing that for 100 years. Uh, we're going <laughs> to, oh, we'll vote those guys out and put these guys in, and these guys didn't do it, so we'll put those other guys back in, and back and forth and back and forth we go. And, well, let's see, how's that gotten? You know, where's that gotten us, dear? To the point of, uh, while families rode the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and searched for Nemo on clam mobiles in the theme parks at Disney, <laughs> the workers who monitored computers in, in industrial buildings nearby, making sure millions of Walt Disney ticket sales, store purchases, hotels, reservations went through without a hitch, 
some in, some were performing so well they thought they had been called in for bonuses instead about 250 disney employees were told in late october that they were being laid off many of their jobs were transferred to immigrants on temporary visas for high skilled technical workers from india <laughs> oh but we need to train those those new ones with the little visas uh, over the next three months, some Disney employees were required to train their replacements to do the jobs that they had lost if they wanted to get their severance pay. You know, that's almost, Randy, like, that's almost like you paying the federal government to take away your rights. Oh, absolutely. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> We've been doing that a long time. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Question, comment, phone lines are open. And we're back. Question, comment, my for my guest, Larry Taylor. Phone lines are open, 877-254-7524. You can uh, reach Larry through the web at his uh, blog site, LarryWTaylor.org. LarryWTaylor.org. Check it out. Send him an email. Say, put me on the list. I'm already on a list, so just put me on another list. <laughs> We're all on a list. Yes. Oh, that's right. Hey, are they are they uh, recording tonight? Presentation by John. Uh, I do not know. Oh, okay. I sure would like a copy of that. If anybody can obtain one, I I would really appreciate it. There you go, folks. Uh, the words went out there. Uh, if anybody can uh, set up a system and records John's presentation tonight, he'll be at the community center seven to nine. Uh, and I want someone to take it upon themselves to pass the hat for this radio station. Help us out. Feed the squirrel. We also got to feed Michael there. He's getting he's getting weary sitting there at the at the phone bank waiting for it to ring. As a, for a question or comment for us, you know. <laughs> I know there's somebody out there listening, or maybe, maybe you know, it's, it's summertime and and everybody's you know headed out there to the to the banks of the River Denial to bathe in the water some more. Who knows? I'll I mean, tell you what, uh, you know, Randy. One one reason that that you know that. People are not prepared, and, and you know we we've, we've taught preparedness for a long, long time. But one of the reasons you know that is is you know that not only is the church itself not prepared the people for what's coming, but do you know any families, Randy, that the parents have literally set them down and told the, uh, and instructed the children what to do if nobody comes home from work, or they never see their parents again. Now, you know, this sounds drastic. What I'm saying sounds really radical and drastic and probably politically incorrect because the federal government could find somewhere for you if your parents didn't come back or or maybe they'd find somewhere for, their, you know, the parents. <laughs> but, uh, listen, families have not sat down and had a good meeting about what ill. And, do you know, Randy, you know, things are not, uh, they're not normally, we've left normal. We've left normal. We're entering into a summer that appears to be really a crazy, radical summer that we're ill-prepared for, no matter what city you live in or what community you live in. And we're going into uh, September through December that a lot of people have really had some uh, issues waiting on things to happen. And what if they do? What if one of those things happens? What if Jade Helm is more than we thought? What what if you know Jade Helm you know and I like uh, John Moore because he reminds me of the old guy on Dragnet. Of course that tells how old I am. Maybe remember on Dragnet, you know it was just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. You know that's that, that's John Moore. <laughs> he just he's a fact man, and so but I appreciate that. And um, you know, but what if, if speculations? What if there's a false flag? What if there's um, more? What if there is an attack on this nation from other countries that are having problems right now? And uh, what if what if there's an infiltration of our borders? What we have not prepared the people of this nation to react 
to, to, to the next day. Yeah, you know that. Uh, the, the reaction fortune. is is uh, okay. Uh, well, maybe we ought to have a plan in case of a flood or, or earthquake, or you know, or we got to evacuate because of a wildfire. Uh, but, yeah, okay. Well, you know, maybe maybe you ought to have three days worth of food. Yeah, okay. Uh, and it's like, uh, you know, that's what the government's putting out, FEMA. And, right. And so, but, yeah, have you sat down with your kids, your family, your wife, uh, uh, your neighbors, and said, you know, what if? What if? You know, it, it's kind of, Randy, it's kind of, what if? You know, it, do you tell your children, this is the plan? Don't deviate from the plan. If we don't come back home tomorrow, this is the plan. If we never come back, this is your plan. And what if they tell you at school you can't go home? You can't go home anymore. Your parents can't come get you. What is the plan? We don't have one. The American people, the American families don't have a family plan that that would take in those issues, and those are dire issues. I mean, this could happen. Anything could happen. Any, what if New Madrid goes? Y'all may not hear from Larry Taylor for a day or two. Or you may never hear from him again, you know? Absolutely. And the plans are not made. They're just not there. Uh, we always think business as usual tomorrow. Maybe not so. Well, and this Jade Helm and, uh, you know, let's see. Oh, they were only conducting uh, uh, numerous exercises on September 11th, 2001. They, well, they were just... They were just exercises. Uh, well, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, that first battle, uh, you know, that started the Civil War along with Abraham Lincoln, maybe that was a trial run too, reckon? Yes, yes. We don't know. I mean, we don't know. And, but everybody's, that we're so used to normalcy in America and being told what to do, we're always looking around and asking somebody for their plan. We don't have a plan. We don't even, we're not even told to have one. Now FEMA comes along and they begin to tell you all, you know, in the last, you know, isn't it interesting, Randy, that during the time everybody was ridiculing and making fun of every, anybody that talked about a Planet X or a Hercobolus or, or a Destroyer or all these different names of something that mysteriously apparently came by during different civilizations, uh, you know, everybody's made fun of. You know, then FEMA, during that same time frame, begins to tell people, well, maybe you need to put back some water. Well, you know, you might need to put back some food. And then they even extended the time frame, and they said, maybe you need more than a few days or weeks. Maybe you need a few months, maybe six months. You know, we're watching, We're it's like uh, we're watching a government, so to speak, try to keep up with knowledge that people might have and, and really, and like Standale says, Randy, Standale says, you know, if I was running the government I would drop clues. I wouldn't tell anybody anything because I wouldn't want to panic. And he said, that's probably what they're doing. But he said, I would have a few movies out there that would would uh, uh, give people a mindset of a disaster that might come and, and, and then I would drop clues along the road and I think that's what we're seeing, Randy, is, is we have been seeing clues. A lot of the movies are clues. We just don't realize that. Right. But, you know, at the same time, though, Larry, they've, they've over the years, uh, I mean, for, for decades now, they have spent trillions of dollars building their little underground high holes and stocking them up. And, you know, uh, <clears throat> Russia, China, uh, they... They've trained their people, saying, okay, uh, we built these shelters here. We're building more. Uh, you guys go over here. China, in the major cities, they didn't build shelters and stuff, but they built tunnels where the people can walk out of the city X number yeah. of miles uh -huh. and be out of the out of the destruction. Well, I'm going to tell you something now, Randy, you may not even know. Because I'm in contact with people in the UK, England. Yeah. In England, because of all the bear bombers, Russian bombers that have been infiltrating their airspace, uh, do you know that they're literally in the school systems having, uh, having nuclear drills 
on what to do in case there's a nuke goes off. Do you know that? We're not being told everything that's going on. Really? I didn't need, I did not. Yes, know. yes. I, I got information from over there that this is going on. They're very, very concerned and, and Russia's really threatening a lot. Matter of fact, there's reports of, uh, uh you know, of course, we, are we receiving any threats? Are we re receiving any, uh, nuclear capable Russian bombers in U.S. airspace? <laughs> are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are submarines off our shores? Or there again? Are you kidding me? But you know we're not we're not preparing for anything like that. We're not preparing for anything like that at all. No. Because well, you know we we've, we've got all these you know global trade partnerships now. We're all going to be one big happy family. Uh, you know we're 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 you know it's it's for the people. Uh. <laughs> so, okay. Never mind oh. that. It's all in secret, and that uh, we can't, uh, uh, the congressman or anybody can't read it except going into a room, and they can't take notes, and they can't take their cell phone in. Uh, exactly, and they, exactly. And uh, cannot talk about it to anyone. Well, so what is this uh, trade partnership thing? Hmm. Oh, well, uh, there are reports, and I have seen it in, in uh, some of the uh, posts coming out of World Net Daily yesterday, and I don't know if you've seen it yet, that there is uh, a number of immigration issues embedded in the Obama trade deal. deal. Yeah, it's more, than it, it's more than it appears to be. It's just like Obamacare. It's another nightmare for America. Well, and here we are, we're shipping... How many thousands have we shipped in already from the Middle East? Uh, oh my, they're coming in. They're coming in every day. I, every day they're pouring in. You know. Well, that's one way. Isn't that one way, Randy? You you uh, you recycle the population, and you can certainly change a nation, can't you? Oh, absolutely. You know, and you've got the uh, this the Islamics already publicly stating that they're going to take over Europe. And the way they're going to do it is we're going to immigrate there, and then we're going to outbreed you. <laughs> That's how they work. <laughs> That's how they work. Huh. Well, let's see. Oh, let's, see. let's let's go to the the one. Uh, well, where is it? Where is it? Before we run out of time here, and we'll talk about this. Here's a uh, Jeremiah fifty one. Here is a prophecy against Babylon. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they, sh and they shall lift up a shout against thee. Now, one of the definitions, if you go look up caterpillars in mm -hmm. Strong's, is aliens. Isn't there you that go. Exactly what's happened today. It, it, it don't have to be insects. It can be people that act like insects. You know. <laughs> yes. And I don't mean it, and I don't mean anything about that at all. Uh, no racism, nothing. I'm just being very factual. When something comes across your border to to gobble up all the benefits, it, it was used to that have plagues of insects, and that's what they did. I mean, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Uh, you know, the re in the report from Judicial Watch of the ISIS camp, right eight miles from the Texas border, there down by El Paso. There, well, know, we've we've had uh, Randy, we've had lots of intelligence, and and I'm sure, and I'm sure people are thinking, my God, I can't believe what John Moore and Larry Taylor mentioned there about Obama and and him having problems with the uh, nuclear people, which is the Navy and the uh, Air Force. Uh, this is going on daily, and people just don't, well, they just don't want to hear it. I mean, they don't want to hear it. And, and, uh, the same, the same thing with, uh, you know, you talking about the border. Right. Uh, caller, hang, hang, well, we're on, go ahead, caller, who we got? Uh, Benny, it's just me, I'll hang on. This is Benny down in Texas. Benny, go hang on through the break then, I hope. Okay, I'll hang on. No, hang on there and stay with us. That okay. uh, you know you're down in Texas, uh, uh, in Lubbock, and that uh, well, the the immigration is pouring in on you too, isn't it? Well, that and, and 
the uh, refugee relocation uh, program that is across the U.S., one of the cities close to Lubbock, Amarillo, is a big uh, target for those refugees to be relocated at, and they're having to deal with that, and they're having lots of problems, in, you know, with the, some of the people that they're putting in there. Yes. And, you know... Whoever thought that the, the Islamic mosque would be going up in Amarillo, Texas. Yes. Right. Stay tuned. We'll be right back here on the American Freedom Network. And we're back. Larry Taylor, my guest, uh, you can sign up for his email alerts. Just go to LarryWTaylor.org, LarryWTaylor.org. John Moore will be there at the Senior Center tonight, uh, 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, if anybody's uh, listening, can come by and help uh, here in 30 minutes, uh, set up chairs and stuff. Diane would appreciate that. She'll be there about 6 o'clock, so... Um, and somebody, please uh, take it on yourself to pass the hat tonight for this station because you wouldn't know about the meeting tonight if it wasn't for this station. And we need your help just to... You won't hear these shows on Clear Channel. That's that's the truth of it all. We've got uh, Benny Pope down there in Lubbock, Texas. What's up in Lubbock? <coughs> oh... You know, we've got a lot of strange things happening around us down here, Randy, just like y'all do up there. We had a, a, a offspring come land at a little municipal airport not too far from us in a, in a small town just west of Lubbock the other day, uh, just out of the blue. Supposedly, the uh, owners of private aircraft at that airport got an email from our U.S. representative in this district stating that uh, the airport will be closed indefinitely uh, because, mm-hmm. of, you know, paraphrasing, the military is taking it over and it's all due to Jade Hill. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to get a hold of that email. The people that have it don't seem to want to share it. And so we can't <laughs> verify, we can't verify that part of it. But the, the Osprey was seen by several hundred people and many, a lot of photos taken of it. Uh, you know, for what reason a military aircraft would be landing at a little municipal airport, we have no clue. I think well, there's a lot of activity around Midland, too. That, uh, Midland's not too far from you, is it? No, it's not. You know, it's just about an hour and a half uh, uh, south of us. And, yeah, there's a lot of activity down there. I talk to a lot of people down there. Uh, of course, Dave Hodges uh, has some uh you know, people that are watching also down there and talking to him, and he's written several art- articles on it. Uh, the one thing that was really strange that I got wind of uh, pretty early on was the fact uh, that right after they closed the Walmart, they begin, to, a few days later, a week later, they begin to tear up the pavement out in front of Walmart. Now, this is a huh. six-lane highway. Uh, this Walmart faces east, so there's the six-lane highway going north-south, and then on the north side of it, there's another six-lane highway. Well, they tore this highway up the length and the width of the Walmart property, all six lanes, and then I was told they put a heavier-duty pavement material down, and they did it within 48 hours. Wow. So that wasn't a local company. That was doing the work. How long? How long of <laughs> pavement? How long was that? Well, you, you know what a, a Walmart super center, uh, you know how big oh, they yeah. are, uh, and it was the length and the width of that that the parking lot, you know, around a Walmart super center on two sides. Well, uh, it could be. You know, how, you know the two th- yeah, the two things that crossed my mind is is uh, putting in sensors or. Uh, <laughs> Running lines, but also, you know, uh, in the old military used to, you could, you could, if you had a heavy enough pavement, you could land a lot of, uh, stuff on it. You know, you can land there. Well, that's kind of what, that's about the only thing we can come up with, uh, Larry, as, as to why they'd be putting in a reinforced pavement there. Uh, mm-hmm. the fact that they did it in such a short period of time is just amazing to me. Wow. Uh, a project like that. Here would take you know six weeks. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you know to be 
uh, but supposedly it was uh, just a couple of days, and uh, and they had it done. So uh, we had a big convoy go through a little town southeast of us today. Uh, it was about 60, 65 vehicles uh, headed southeast. Uh, we didn't see it come through the Lubbock area. I haven't had any reports on it, so it was probably went to back roads and then hit the uh, highway going down to Post, Texas. And the people in post saw it going through, and that's the first time they've ever seen anything like that. But it was headed southeast down to the, uh, quote, Jade Ham area of Texas. Hmm. So it seems like every day we get, you know, a few reports here, a few reports there of, of military activity going on. And, uh, of course, we see trains coming through all the time heading both ways, you know, east and west. Um, West would, uh, I mean, headed east, they would eventually turn southeast and go down to that area, but there's a lot of it heading west. And they're loaded with all types of military equipment, from tanks to, uh, you know, radar to all the service vehicles they need to, to run a tank division, uh, things like that. So, yeah, it's strange. It, it really is strange. We've never seen this type of military movement. The only thing I compared to was back before, uh, desert, uh you know, uh, for 19, Iraqi, uh, the first war in 1991, when they were preparing for it, we had a lot of equipment moving through here. So it's, it's just okay. crazy. It's kind of interesting. It, it, it makes one think, and of course I'm telling people that's all I'm doing is just considering things, but, you sure. know, I do, or I am aware of, uh, of what the military, the military did a, uh, a, uh, invasion assessment. Uh, a couple of years ago or more, and that assessment was basically to uh, recognize areas of an invasion into the U.S. and how to uh, defend for them. And so, you know, uh, on a deal like this, like you said before Iraq, uh, if all this military movement, you almost would have to be getting ready to ship a lot of this out to go somewhere to fight, or you are preparing for an invasion against your own country without telling your people. So we don't know. Well, that's just it. I mean, the, the, this is that's this statement. I'm fixing maybe it's not a positive statement, but uh, for the concerns of most Texans, that would be a positive development that they were actually preparing to defend and not attack uh, a state like Texas. Well, uh, and, and you guys have been under an invasion for a decade from Mexico. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, we're a, a big pass-through state. You know, a lot of them stay here, but a lot of them go to other states from here. Yeah. Um, as, as you can just look around and see for yourself. But they all came through the southern border. But for, you well, know, Randy you Reed, uh, go, go ahead, ahead, Larry. Go ahead. I was just going to mention, I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen the movie Jericho. J-E-R-I-C-H-O. Oh, yeah. 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 That, that kind of, that was really big. They took it off the air. It vanished. It only two seasons, and I mean, it did vanish, and they've only made a few, uh, graphic novels since then of it, but as far as video, gone. But, you know, the interesting thing in Jericho, there was a false flag attack, which was blamed on another country, and the other country was nuked them, but they didn't do it. Uh, it was all right here within that it was done, and then the interesting thing was, uh, you know, later in the second season, you know, who did it? Who did the pirates of Visa attack? They attacked Texas in that movie system. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And so it's, that's kind of um, the, it, at the back of everybody's mind. My mother actually owned this, those DVDs of the, two, the first two seasons and couldn't wait for the third season to come out, and they canceled it. So they yeah. were... They could. Were they sharing? Uh, were they telling too much of the plan? Who knows? Who knows? Benny, thanks for calling. You want to hold? Nope. No. I have something to share with you. Okay. Stay with us. Uh, hang in there, caller. We'll get to you after the break here. We're back. Larry Taylor, my guest. Uh, we've got, uh, well, update from Paul Martin here. Paul. Hey, Randy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Diane will be there. She's on the road. I, uh, traffic's pretty heavy on I-25, so y'all just be patient. But she is on the way, got the key, and she'll be there in a little bit. I'll be there a little bit before 7. Okay. John Moore will be oh. there at Senior Center or Community Center right across the street from the radio station. And, Paul, 
uh, delegate somebody to pass the hat for the station. We need your help. Okay. Okay. Roger that. Roger that. So they need some help at 6 o'clock setting up the chairs and stuff. So, hey, have fun there. Show up. John will be there 7 to 9. And um, pass the hat, folks. Pass the hat. Help us out. We got Benny back online. Benny, you with us? Benny dropped off again. Benny dropped off again. So Uh-oh. we got another. Do we have another caller? Hello, caller. No caller. Well, break it. He broke one nine. It's smoking. Mo, you got a copy on this week, mobile? Uh, go ahead uh, and uh, get to the point, smoking Joe. Yeah, the point is, uh, it seems like we're all. You know, there's not many candles out there, and I'm glad to see you guys are out there. It just, I wish you would p- uh, put the tail on the donkey. And, you know, pin the tail on the donkey, and, and the donkey is the Antichrist, and I do believe it's the uh, the vicar of Christ. Uh, well, no, uh, the vicar of Christ is, uh, you mean the, uh, the the grand poopaw that's, that's coming to uh, address the uh, uh, U.S. Congress and the United Nations coming up here in September? Is that what you mean? Caller, caller is gone. Caller dropped off. Well, it is interesting, Randy, because, uh, you know, Malachi Martin, before his untimely death, was really warning about uh, problems in the Vatican. And, uh, matter of fact, Malachi Martin, if people read his material, uh, he actually quit uh, uh, serving the Pope and was given permission to go out on his own. He went to New York and uh, he wrote some books that were supposed fiction, but they had clues in them about how that there were three agencies working in this world that was trying to take over the Middle East and Jerusalem and and uh, really the whole world. And, and one was the, the powers of the West, which was the U.S. and England, et cetera, and the other was the powers of the old Soviet Union, the, the East, and, and uh you know, of course, that's all changed somewhat, but the third agency was the Vatican itself as an agency to take over and rule in this world. And so, yeah, the, the caller, he's got a point. Matter of fact, I'm really intrigued about this September because this is about the t time and all of that kind of stuff, uh, Blood Red Moon. And, uh, you know, we just uh, had a report the other day on the news that uh, they have done a actually done a physical a type on Pentecost had a physical uh, ceremony on the Temple Mount by this uh, group that has uh, prepared, you know, for temple services and stuff. And this thing's ongoing too. And you wonder where this will all tie in. I mean, this is there's a lot of clues. Stuff is, you know, I've never seen so much in this world in movement, in a in a in actually in progress work going on you know we'd see a little here and we'd see a little there but right now it's almost like every single thing is in a status of ongoing change yeah all of it all the above you know well in their they being the rich men of the earth uh the bankers uh you know they're waging war against the people of the earth you got more and more calls for we got to have a cashless society we got to have a cashless society we can't we can't have this cash running around there anymore. Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, we can't have that unless we well unless we all have our uh, little mark. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, that's that's very true. You know, one of the interesting things, uh, Randy, when you read the Word of God, though, you you know, uh, originally you might have begun to wonder why why would you know why would the Lord have written something in this book that said. It's kind of like a warning. It doesn't matter where you go. Even set your nest in the stars. Yeah. I'll get you. I'll come get you. I'll you know. Find you. And now, now we can begin to see. Now we can begin to see. They really think they can they, they can hide somewhere away and not be touched. It's impossible. Well, the rich men of the earth uh, 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 some years ago. Uh, commissioned uh, the Millennium Project. You've heard about that, haven't you? Yes, yes, I've heard of that. Where where they they got the scholars together and the ACAD, the PhDs, and said, well, you know, look at look at all of these uh, ancient texts, the Bible, and and all these things, and come back and tell us if all of these things be true. And they did their research and they 
looked at this and they said, oh, yes, it all be true. And so uh, they busily, um, busily are preparing to survive this whole thing and come out on the other side. But, well, the Lord has other plans for them, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's uh and very interesting too is the is the uh, movement that ISIS is making right now. Uh, if you've been reading some of my intel, uh, you know ISIS has even taken hold of the Iranian rockets, you know, in Gaza and are firing rockets on Israel in the Israel southern southern region out of Gaza. I mean, they're also trying to take over ISIS is the uh, the Israel uh, Syrian border. Uh, they're down by Lebanon, uh, you know, the Golan Heights region. I mean, I, I know a lot of people think ISIS is just tied up only in Iraq and, and uh, Syria, but they're not. They're really around the globe. Matter of fact, they're threatening Jordan right now. I mean, it's incredible what's going on over there. It, it's just absolutely, and uh, they're using lots and lots of United States military equipment. The, some of the best. Yes, some of the best. Stay tuned. We'll be right back finish off today's show question comment phone lines are open here on the american freedom network some help setting up so uh check it out um seven to nine tonight i was i I don't know where i was larry taylor larry w taylor dot org sign up for his email alerts and uh well um Get ready, folks. Make a plan. Uh, turn off the spigot of, from the river denial. <laughs> well, Randy, you know one of the one of the signs that uh, ought to alert us a little bit is the fact that it ought to alert us to availability of food because when you have Walmart closing down, Walmart stores being closed down, that is not a good sign. And at the same time, as uh, John Moore mentioned. We have never seen weather patterns and weather systems so disrupted as we have into uh, this year, into this summer. I mean, we've okay. never seen it. We didn't even talk about the eggs and the chickens and how they were, were up to what? Oh, my. Absolutely. Absolutely, Randy. Uh, 37 it, it, million laying hens now that uh, uh, they've decided they've got to do away with because, well, our factory farms here aren't working. And... I mean, you're down in the area down there. A lot of poultry. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Major, a major. It's a major industry down here, and you know we're looking at less food. I mean, we're simply going to have. And listen, all the farmers, the people down here, nobody has gardens. Nobody has gardens. We've had floods, like you would believe, and they're saying there's not going to be any fresh food. Well, and here we have uh, uh, the cheapest source of protein for the people out there are eggs, okay? And then, Mm -hmm. so if we attack this food, you know, protein source for the people, uh, you know, it's just, you know, it's just all of the way the Lord said it was coming to about. Pestilence, famines, war, you know, rumors of war, nation against nation, ethnos against ethnos. It's all coming to pass. Oh, and then on the horizon, uh, Randy, saw it green. <laughs> See, I know how old you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, in fact, I've, I'm going to go tomorrow to the video store and see if I can rent that movie to watch it again. It's, uh, a, it's an incredible hint. I mean, it's really, an, you know, ISIS is already cannibalizing. They're, they're already eating people. I mean, uh, we just hadn't freeze dried them over here yet. No. Well, I mean, when this is how. Uh, anyway, uh, moving, moving, uh, uh, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving the refugees into Amarillo, Texas. I'd never thought, you know, uh, would be putting up the spires of the bosques in Amarillo, Texas. Yes, sir. Reed. Well, it's, it's all, cha- we're, we're in a, a process of total change in America, especially the Southwest. I mean, yeah. the Southern states, oh my. And, uh, 
And, you know, I wish I had bigger clues on where this is going. I don't, but I'm telling people to prepare. You know, that, if anything I say today, Randy, people need to prepare their children, prepare your family members. What if? Yes, what if? Do you have a plan? Have you even thought about a plan? No. We're out of time, Larry Taylor. Thank you so very, very much for being with us. God bless and hang in there. And remember, folks, the question is not, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? The question is, does he know you?